Thank you for reading it that way. It's the way it needs to be read. I was worried um, this morning that we were just going to read this story in an ordinary tone of voice as if all of that pain isn't there. Um, so, yeah, that feels really good. Um, but the other thing I wanted to comment on was Rachel's children's story where sometimes right, we can't see this stuff. It all looks pretty black and white on the page. So I thought this morning, instead of me just talking to you about the story, we would, we would do it together. So we want to we wanna enact this story. So it will give Will a bit of a chance to use his photography skills here. Um, so I've got very <coughs> parts here. So I, I need someone who wants to be Jesus. Anyone ever wanted to be Jesus? Okay. Okay? Deb, you want to be Jesus this morning? Okay. Then we need a little girl about 12 years old. Gee, where can we find a little girl about 12 years old? <coughs> so, you guess you can do it. I appreciate that, so. Um, but you know what? You don't get a speaking part. Sorry. <laughs> you know, you just have to be anyway. Oh. So you, you can be the little girl that's 12 years old. Um, how are you feeling this morning? <laughs> no, you're very, very sick. There you go. Okay. Um, so this, this uh, little girl that's 12 years old needs a dad. Hmm. Who's going to volunteer for the dad part? I don't think, I don't think you understand that, no. I'm just going to give this to him. Okay. Um, we need a woman who's been sick for 12 years. She's been sick for 12 years. <laughs> almost 12 years. Okay, so I'll send it. Cindy wants to be the, okay. Um, now, um, whoops, that's not it, that's my copy. Let me get this copy. There we go. Okay, um, so, so um, we need a group of people around this family, since they're obviously suffering trauma from their daughter who's very sick. So if you, if you guys can, if you want to join them over here, and maybe you want to join them back there, you can be, right? And so we need... We need someone in this crowd here to be some people. Me! You want to be some people? You can be some people. Okay? Good. So, Jesus, you have to come up here because we're going to start this. We're going to start this up here. So, Jesus is just, just across the lake in the boat, and a great crowd has gathered around him. So, that's you guys. I will come to the crowd. No, the crowd has to come to you. <laughs> the great crowd gathered around him. He didn't gather around the great crowd. That's <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So Jesus had crossed by the sea, right? <laughs> then Jairus, Jairus, right, comes. We're crowded. <laughs> yeah, you guys, yeah, crowd, crowd together. <laughs> okay, so Jairus comes, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. There you go. And begged him repeatedly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. I don't have my right piece of paper here. I went with him. I went with him. Thank you. I went with him. Let us take it to So, whoa, 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 whoa. So this is, right? This is our first seat. Right? My sermon is called Two Daughters. So this was just our sort of introduction to the first one. Right? Jairus here is a synagogue leader. He's the big man in town. He's like the equivalent of the mayor. Right? So for him to throw himself down at Jesus' feet when he's really more used to having other people throw themselves at his feet, right, is a big thing. Here's a man who cares deeply about his daughter. And it's important to understand that, right? I mean, seriously, if your daughter was at the point of death, is there something you wouldn't do? Yeah, maybe that's... that's pretty much, yeah. I mean, if you thought this was a shot, you'd take it, right? We, we all understand this. But anyway, so anyway, 
right? Off they go, right? And the large crowd followed him and pressed it. And now there was a woman. Well, slow down here. Don't, don't go too fast, right? Who'd been suffering from bleeding for all of these years, right? And then Mark takes a little shot at all the doctors, right? But then, but she says to herself, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Now, just wait, just wait, right? <laughs> so she's been bleeding for 12 years. So that's, of course, right, awful in its own way. But the kind of bleeding she's been doing makes her ritually unclean. But it doesn't just make her unclean. It makes her clothes unclean. It makes any food she makes unclean. It makes the bed she sits, sleeps on unclean, the chair she sits on unclean. Everybody she touches becomes unclean. <laughs> right. So she's probably very lonely. She's probably very single, whether she wants to be or not. Right? And like, if these other people in the crowd know her, and everybody does, because it's a small town, right? They're probably like shuffling away from her as she gets near. Right? So she is... Right. She is suffering in, in many more ways than just the bleeding. Let's go ahead. So, she touches his clothes, right? And immediately, she feels healed. Well, which is good for her, but of course she's got to let everybody else know. But Jesus turns to the crowd and says, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples are all going, like, who touched your clothes? Like, this is a, you know, this is a tightly packed group here. Everyone's been touching her clothes, his clothes, right? But, but Jesus looks around to see who did it, right? And so the woman, right, who knows what's going on here, immediately, right, falls down before him. We've got lots of falling down on the ground here going on, right? And he says to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. So here we have in our story, daughter number two. Our first daughter was Jairus' daughter. Our second daughter is Jesus' daughter. And as Jesus' daughter and as sons and daughters of God, she is also our sister. Right? We have just witnessed, heard about the healing of our sister so many years ago. But anyway, so while Jesus is still talking, some people come from the leader's house and say to him, Wow. He's sympathetic. Too. <laughs> yeah. But Jesus says, Do not fear, only believe. So this is Jairus' problem. Right? His daughter's dead. And Jesus says, Do not fear, only believe. But he's got nothing to lose. Right? He's already lost his daughter. And Jesus says, do not fear. Well, might as, well, might as well take a shot, right? So, Jesus sends everybody back except Peter, James, and John. So you can decide who wants to be Peter, James, and John. Nobody wants to be Peter, James, and John, apparently. <laughs> no, you were already some Okay, here we go. Peter, James, and John. Okay, and they go to Jairus' house. Right? And people are weeping and wailing. We need to hear some weeping and wailing. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Right? We don't do this much here. One of the things we, we heard in Ghana was weeping and wailing. So lots and lots of nuts. Right? And then, and Jesus comes in and he says, He says, He says, He says, Why do you make such a commotion and weep? The child is not dead. She's merely sleeping. And they laughed at him. <laughs> <laughs> that was Jairus' dad laughing. Jairus' dad. Jairus' dad. Okay. Uh, uh. So he kicks everybody out of the room. Right? Ex 
except mom and dad. Because the rest of you, right? Uh huh. And he took the child by the hand and says, which means the little girl get up. And immediately the girl gets up and begins to walk around. And they were overcome with amazement. Then Jesus strictly orders them not to tell anybody. Can you even imagine this? Right? Your daughter just got raised from the end. Don't tell anybody. Okay. Yeah, this is going to happen, right? So all of these people have gathered for the funeral, right? And so Jairus comes out here and goes, we decided to cancel the funeral. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here, right? That's going to work. Right? What's going to happen instead? Biggest party ever, right? Because they've already been gathering food for the funeral, right? <laughs> Let's eat! They've been storing up wine, you know, in case things go badly. Let's make it the biggest party this town has ever seen. Because your daughter was dead and, he, and she's alive now. You may be seated. I think there's a lot of point in expanding much on that. Right? I mean, that it's a sermon. Um, and it's a story that happened many, many years ago to someone we will never meet. But hopefully it's also a story that we can continue. And we continue to be people who need healing. Of all sorts of things. And we continue also to be healed. We heard those stories this morning too. And we need to rejoice with overwhelming joy when we are healed and mourn with overwhelming pain when we suffer. And, and in the midst of all this, Jesus still is there among us. And we are still together. Amen.